I gotta testify Come up in the spot looking extra fly For the day I die I'ma touch the sky Gotta testify Come up in the spot looking extra fly For the day I die I'ma touch the sky Like feeling tired it's probably just because I'm like in the home haven't moved around much once I step outside that's when I feel like oof but also it's like I've been really trying to work on my sleep schedule I've been trying to get to bed at like no later than 12 because I realized I need the full eight hours I need the full eight hours or else I can I cannot sleep anything less than the full eight hours I just will not get up I've been really trying to get to bed before 12 and last night I did not do that and there was no reason for me to not do that like I literally had nothing to do it was just like what was I saying I'm doing oh I ended up I decided that I wanted to start re-watching The Walking Dead because I never finished The Watching De Walking Dead because who can finish The Walking Dead <laughs> okay I went on to Netflix all right to re to start it over and I just started scrolling through the seasons and it was just like never ending Never ending. How many seasons are there? Like 20? Gosh. The Walking Dead is like a time capsule. Like I watched the first episode. I'm like, why do I look like I'm watching something from the 1950s? Love it though. Like I love the nostalgia, but I'm just like, oh my God. So interesting. I watched an episode of The Walking Dead, the pilot episode. Loves that. Actually, sidebar. The pilot episode of The Walking Dead really does remind me of the pilot episode of The Last of Us. I think I forgot a lot about the pilot episode of The Walking Dead while I was watching The Last of Us. I really love post-apocalyptic zombie movies and shows. It is one of my favorite genres in television. I love post-apocalyptic. I love dystopian. Oh my god, I eat it up. It tastes so good. Like, it's so, like, there's just something about, like, a hundred years from now. Well, let me not say a hundred. 700 years from now, the world gets destroyed. Human beings are lost. Zombies, nuclear warfare, that are like all this stuff. Like there's something about it where it's like, I don't know what it is because normally I don't like the stuff that I watch to make me feel a bit too real. But I think because it's dystopian, I'm like, oh, okay, like this is how shitty the world can become, but my world's not that shitty yet. So it kind of makes me feel better about the world that I'm living in now. Cause I'm like, la di da di da. I don't have zombies. At the same time, I think it would be really cool to live through a zombie apocalypse. Just a little bit. I mean, like, just sometimes when I'm feeling bored, I'm like, oh, like, to make some stuff shake up. Like, zombies would be cool. Like, to see, to actually experience that. Like, I, I always picture myself in The Walking Dead. Pew, 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 pew. Rick, hello, pew, pew. I don't know how we got, it's, first of all, it's hot in here. Let me turn on the air. But I don't know why I just got talking about the walking dead so that's what i was doing last night and then i fell down like a youtube rabbit hole i think and anyways i got to i ended up getting to bed at like one o'clock which was not my goal so now i'm feeling a bit like tired even though like i woke up at like 11 because like i said i need the eight hours that's probably more than eight hours but i feel like i need to sit down let's go sit down so I need to update you guys on pretty much because I haven't vlogged this whole weekend today today is Monday I didn't vlog last weekend or anything like that or even like during the end of the week biggest change I did my hair well now I moved to a lighting where you can't really see it but I did my hair I decided that like I was gonna do it myself this time around um, because the last time when I did it I went to the braiding shop and had them do it which was like good but this time I was like okay let me try to do it myself because 
I realized there were certain things about the braids that I got from the braiding shop that like I didn't necessarily like and I like to be in full control that way like I could make everything how I like it so I did it and honestly I think I ate I did the goddess as well originally I went into my mindset doing this hair and I was like okay I want it to be shorter and I want it to be like less dense I wanted it to be like shut up I wanted it to be like something like this like very like thin and just light and then short like I didn't need it to be like a 30 inch bust down again but for some reason I was just sitting in the chair and I'm and all of a sudden it's butt length it's longer than it was when I went to the salon and it's like definitely super dense I'm not upset about it I think it looks great but it wasn't what I was going for initially so next time I do it, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, oh, and I dyed my hair black. I went back to black. I, I, I did not do, like, I was supposed to record all of this. I was supposed to record me dyeing my hair, doing the braids, but then it just got, I got very overwhelmed by it all, and I was, like, doing all of it at, like, random hours in the night. So I was just like, I can't. I'm a bit too tired, and I need all the energy I could get. But yeah, my hair is back to black, and I don't know. There's something about the black that just makes me feel... I don't know like I like the color it's fun and fresh sometimes and I know I'll definitely probably be like okay like now I'm bored of black I want a color but I do there's something that I just love about like a simple brown a simple just regular old brown on Saturday I went to see the Barbie movie okay I was supposed to vlog that as well I was supposed to vlog that as well I don't know so I just really have to be in the mood I really have to be in the mood but I went to see the Barbie movie 10 out of 10 so good I, I just love everything about it. And I also, I think it's so interesting. I think this whole Barbie thing is so interesting because so many of us, like I was walking into this theater and I was like, wait, have I seen the trailer for this movie? No, <laughs> no, I had not. I had not seen the trailer for this movie. I had no clue what this movie was about. I had no clue who was in it, except for Mar Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. I had no clue about like, any of the contents within the movie nothing at all all i knew was the marketing all i knew was that all of a sudden zara is pink and has a collab with barbie all of a sudden there's barbie suitcases everywhere and like everybody and their mother is walking around with hot pink and i'm like oh okay like barbie yeah yeah, yeah. i'll go see it that i think it's so like it's so interestingly genius because i think i think everybody knew that like trying to promote this movie just based on the contents within the movie wasn't going to be much of like a success because it's it's really a basic simple movie like it's it's very much just like a basic simple movie but like making this phenomenon and like this whole like culture around it like i walked so i went with my mom and my aunt we had like a little barbie girls day my mom and my aunt they both wore pink they were like pink tops, like a cute Barbie fit. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really like how I look in pink. So I didn't wear pink, but I wore like something girlier than I knew I normally would. Cause I'd be like, okay, girl, Barbie would do this. Barbie would. So we were like walking around Manhattan. We went to brunch first. We sat down for brunch and like the people next to us were like, are you guys going to see Barbie? Yeah. Are you going to see Barbie? And we're like, yeah. We got a six o'clock show tonight. When's yours? We were like three. No other movie has done. I'm walking around the city and I'm seeing people in pink and I'm like, wait, they're probably going to see Barbie. And then we went into we went into a store and as soon as we walked in, all the store workers were like, hi, Barbie. You guys going to see Barbie? Like there's something about that, like something about feeling included in this like phenomenon where everybody is just like oh my god yeah barbie 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 i no, i wanted to joe's coffee i wanted to go get a chai latte right walked out i'm just smiling i'm like la -di -da -di -da. and then the guy's like yeah thank you barbie i'm like what he's like he, he took and he turns his like tip jars around and he has one tip jar that's like has like an oppenheimer picture on it and the other tip jar that has a barbie picture on it like it's just I don't know i think they did a great job with this marketing because this this movie definitely wouldn't have been as big if if it didn't create like its own culture 
And the and it and it's it's so fun and I'm so glad that like I went out to the theater and I saw it. I didn't see it opening weekend, but I saw it like second opening weekend, which is still like a lot. Like, oh my god, to get these tickets. Oh, but yeah, so like I saw it on the second opening weekend. So it's still like very much hyped up. Everybody's still talking about it. And like as soon as you walk into the theater, everybody's in pink. And I don't even like pink. I don't even like pink. But it would just it just made me so happy like girls guys little kids old ladies there was this old woman in this like beautiful pink gown with her like walker i was like this is so wholesome and it made me want to cry i'm just like human beings are so interesting sometimes and like just little stuff like this is just so cute like everybody getting dressed up like there, there was this like people in such cute outfits i love seeing the guys in their ken outfits there was like these these two guys that had like the like an 80s inspired like ken outfit i was like love this the movie was 10 out of 10 i loved it it was nothing profound but i i think that's why it was good that i didn't go into it looking at the trailer like i had no expectations for this movie none at all i had zilch zero zero expectations and i think that's good going into it because it was just a fun time like it was just so fun so fresh i thought it was so funny as well like i love movies like that where it's like you know it's just very very self-aware and it's very blatantly self-aware like i was watching a barstool I don't, I don't know why i ended up on barstool but i was watching a podcast a male podcast okay i don't know why i ended up there also but I was watching them talk about and give their review on Barbie. And you know, of course, they didn't like it, which is like fine. Like you don't have like they didn't like it and stuff like that. I'm glad they didn't like it for like the bigotry reasons. But they were just like, yeah, it just wasn't the writing wasn't that great. And it's like, yeah, like I didn't expect the writing to be phenomenal. <laughs> I didn't expect this to be anything profound. I expected it to be like a good time for people. And I definitely think that that's what it was like the guy behind me was dying of laughter hysterically and like i had a smile on my face the whole movie it was just such a feel good movie and i think not everything needs to be like super profound and super groundbreaking but it's just like that little aspect of just feeling seen and feeling comfortable in like a space and in a movie and like barbie was that i did cry <laughs> I did cry at the end. What's like, close your eyes. What is it? Close your eyes. Take my hands. And feel that whole scene. I was sitting in the middle of my aunt and my mom. I was just like, bawling. Bawling. That was so, it was just so, it was so beautiful. And of course, you put Billie Eilish over a already kind of moderately heartwarming scene but once you put Billie Eilish over that <laughs> heartbreaking heartbreaking I also love Billie's new song for this eight eight I do need to get ready to get going and leave the house today's the day I will be getting my throne of glass inspired tattoo so I've made my tattoo appointment for five o'clock it's currently 3 19 I do need to get going um, I'm going to live by the sword. It's where I went to get my last tattoo and it's where I go to get my piercings. So I'm, I'm not going to switch it up. I was originally going to get two, but I've decided I'm, I'm going to get one today because there's one that I know I'm like absolutely set on and I'll show it to you. So I'm going to get, ooh, I'm going to get this. Okay. If you've watched my last video, basically this tattoo is for the 13 for Man in Black Beaks 13 because there's 13 circles and then there's one of them that's filled in at the head. And I was like going back and forth between so many different, like I had this to be like a Bruxis or there was this one for Selena. This one also was really cool as a Bruxis. I want everything to be like very small and very simple, like not too much detail. And I felt like stuff like this, like these like wyverns or dragons i feel like they would be a bit too detailed and i think i want them to put it right here like or here could be cool i think it's either here or here i was debating the wrist but you know what maybe i should draw one time 
Like, I would, uh, maybe I'm still debating the wrist. If I did the wrist, I would do it here because I always wear bracelets on this side. So I would do it like this. I know I want to get another one that is a quote and it's going to be tell me tomorrow. I want to get that, but I have no clue where I want that to be placed and I don't want to make a rash decision and then hate it. So the only one that I'm set on right now is the circles and the tell me tomorrow. That could just be for another day. Maybe even at the end of this week. Maybe I'll figure out where I want it to go at the end of this week and I'll put it on. I'm excited. I'm so excited to get this new tattoo. I got this package from this new store I've been buying from and honestly it's becoming one of my new faves my outfit online literally I've been getting targeted Instagram ads for this store this like online shop for so long and then I eventually followed them and then I've been looking at their stuff they do like all basics like it's only just like basics like basic t-shirts basic dresses basic tops like that's it and I've been following them for a while, but they do stuff like based on drops. So I've never, you know, been in time for the drop, but I finally was, and I ordered stuff like a few weeks ago and I got that. And then that came in and I was like, oh no, I'm obsessed. I need to get my hands on anything else I could get right now. So I don't even remember everything that I got. I think I only got, what did I get? Two things. I only got two things this time around. But just a basic white tee. You guys know how I feel about a basic white tee. Love them. And then I think I got is this. Oh yeah, this is gonna eat. This is gonna be so edible. They have these one shoulder tops that look so stunning. Like look at the way that the top just like sits when it like, when it's not on your body. Like you see the indentation, like how it curves in. Snatches the waist snatches the waist so this is so cute love this i mean they are a bit pricey do they have the prices on here they're a bit pricey like this one top is probably like 35 to 40 but i always like to invest in my basics because i'd rather me spend more money the first time on like a really good basic than have to like keep repeatedly spending money to re to, to reinvest in my basics you know i think i like making the first investment and stuff like basics i never have a problem spending money on because i know i will wear it religiously versus like other things like you know stuff with like patterns or or all this different stuff where i'm like i don't know how often i'm really gonna wear that it's kind of where i'm weary but i know like these two are gonna get so much like i'm you're gonna get sick of them. You're gonna get sick of seeing them, literally. Oh my God, I didn't charge my Kindle last night, but I think it should be fine. 94, that's why I love the Kindle. It never, it's always so good. Okay, my current read right now is Divine Rivals because everybody's been talking about Divine Rivals. They've been saying it's like five star read. It's amazing, da 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 da. So I wanna hop on the bandwagon just like I did for Fourth Wing and I'm only like 10 pages in though, so like I have no opinions and I have no thoughts yet. I'm a bit overwhelmed because I have so much stuff that I want to read. So much stuff. I want to start Akatar. Like really, I, I do. <laughs> I really do. But I know it's gonna kind of like send me into like an obsession like it did with Throne of Glass and I'm just gonna want to keep going and going and going and I'm gonna like detach from the world. And I've just gotten back into the world after my Throne of Glass detachment. So I think I might give myself a little bit of time like for Akatar. I don't know, like maybe mid-August. I'm gonna finish Divine Rivals. And then it depends on how I'm feeling. I have so many rom I have so many romance books like on my physical TBR that I just like have and have not started. Like I could pick up a romance book, or I could do so like I was saying before how I'm really in my dystopian era because I've also been really trying to bro me and this novel me and this novel is like such a love-hate relationship because i no words have entered the page i'm still just like in a whirlwind of brainstorming and trying to figure everything out and if you remember like a long like few months back when i did my first writing video and i was like okay yeah, yeah it's gonna be a dystopian novel 
And then I changed my mind. I was like, no, it's fantasy. It's back to dystopian. But at this point, it's like dystopian fantasy. Like, I don't even know. I do not even know what this is anymore. But I, I, while I was doing my hair, I was watching The Maze Runner. I love The Maze Runner. I love, it's like the best trilogy. The best trilogy, hands down. I've never read the books, but the Maze Runner movie trilogy is so phenomenal. Dylan O'Brien deserved an Oscar for these films. Dylan O'Brien probably deserves an Oscar in general for Styles and Thomas, but Thomas especially because so good. But it's definitely like my favorite, you know, the teen YA dystopian trifecta, Hunger Games, Divergent, and Maze Runner. That's kind of like the trifecta. I think Maze Runner is definitely at the top. I'm obsessed with it. I watched Scorch Trials and Death Cure while I was doing my hair. And it just got me back into a dystopian kick. And I'm like, oh my god, I think I really want to read the books. Because I saw somebody saying that, like, Scorch Cross and Death Cure are nothing like how the books were. So I'm like, oh, because the reason I didn't want to read, I wasn't inclined to read the books. Because I was like, oh, well, I've seen the movie. I already seen what happens. But it's like, people are like, that's not even what happened. So I'm like, oh my god. Alternate ending? Like, slay. Like, I would love that. Oh, yeah. Okay, baddies, I'm back on. It's time for a tattoo reveal. Look at her. This is her. Can you see it in the light? I feel like the light is. Let me flip it. Okay. So, this is the tat. The light and the saran wrap is like making it hard to freaking see. But yeah, there it is. So I have the 13 circles and then one filled in for Manon. Originally when I looked at the photo, I was like, wait, wait a dang minute. Cause I counted the circles and I realized the photo only had 12 circles. And I was like, no, I can't just like, I, it defeats the whole purpose. They're called the 13, not the 12. Like I, I can't. I think I need to stop going to the Soho one because it's always crazy. It's a Monday and it was like crazy. It's always packed. And they always end up forgetting about me. Like I walked in there, I had my five o'clock appointment, like I was early. And then she was like, oh, well, the person that, cause I, I, just sele I just selected any availability. Like I don't have a specific person that I go to. So I just selected anybody. And she was like, oh, the person they put you with is not done yet so like i could put you with another person for the same time and i was like okay cool like i'm not picky <laughs> i'm not picky at all and that was at five o'clock my appointment was at five o'clock she was like okay just go to the waiting room i go to the the waiting area next thing you know it's six o'clock i sat there for an hour and then i got up and i was like i asked one of the person i was like do you know who this person is like the person that is supposed to be tattooing me like because I've been sitting for an hour and I just want to make sure that I didn't like miss them calling my name like if I you know what I'm saying but I've been sitting here the whole time so I'm pretty sure I didn't miss them calling my name and they were like I don't know who that is and I was like no 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 <laughs> let's not and then he was like you know and maybe ask upstairs actually are you the la and he was like yeah and I was like babes I've been sitting here the whole time and then he was like what's your name I was like Maya he pulls up his schedule and because like he was tattooing other people while I was sitting there he pulls up his schedule and then I see my name at the top and like everybody else at the bottom he just forgot to call me <laughs> it's fine I think the universe puts me in situations like this so that other people don't have to be in situations like this because what you gonna do I got the tattoo at the end of the day I'm not gonna complain it wasn't his fault it's an accident accidents happen you know so I'm just it was chill I just sat there for an hour you know maybe I was meant to be there for an hour Maybe there was something else happening in the world that I needed to be sheltered from for that entire hour. I love the placement. I think it's like, it's definitely not as hidden as this one. Like this one, you really have to just be like, woo, for it to see it. But it's not as hidden as this one, but it's still not like anything crazy. Oh, pain level, ooh, girl. 
this one hurt i made it through it was definitely ooh. it felt like white hot pain like it was like it came to a point where it was like no longer i could feel the pain it just felt like a burn i felt like it was burning it was quite expensive so i will not be getting the words for probably another good month or so. Oh, and I have to show you what I got from Sephora. Spent way too much money today. <laughs> I guess it's the last day of the month. And did I spend a lot in July? Probably. The main thing that I wanted to go in there for is this Polish Choice Exfoliant 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant Salicylic Acid. I wanted this because I have been having a lot of like small you can't you won't be able to see with the camera but I have a lot of like small just like texture on my face like it's not acne but it just feels like it's like texture like my skin isn't like utterly smooth and I looked up like what gets rid of that like kind of texture or like small tiny bumps and they were like you just need a good exfoliant and I realized I didn't have an exfoliant in my skincare routine so um they said this one the polish choice one is great for acne prone skin i got the benefit brow pencil i got it in the color four brown and then i finally got the anastasia brow freeze brow styling wax because everybody and their mama be using this styling wax and i have i use right now i use the half magic grippy brow sculpting gel and this is good but i feel like i need something that really just sculpts like really just lifts the brows to the gods and everybody uses this so i figured i might as well hop on the bandwagon and see how it goes that's my sephora haul those three things can we guess can we guess can we guess those three things were 63 dollars Woo! Woo! i love being a human being breakfast pretty soon but I was trying to decide um, if I wanted to leave the house today and if I wanted to get out first of all it's a really nice day I love that it's getting cooler okay it's no longer like a hundred degrees feels like the depths of hell and I'm dying like no longer like I stepped outside on the patio today and I was like oh my god it's pleasant so that kind of made me feel like I was missing out and I needed to be outside but actually let me check the weather for the for the rest of the week because it's like only tuesday you know like i could go out other days today it's 83 oh tomorrow's gonna be 82 i could go out tomorrow or i could go out thursday when it's a little bit cloudy which sounds nice i was gonna go out go to a coffee shop and do some writing because i'm really i'm i'm in my writing mood i'm just really trying to focus and like grind out on this novel that <laughs> will not be written and that I'm going to war with because it does not want to be written. I've been writing my entire life. Like I've been writing 
fantasy stories, fan fiction, like all the jazz, but I've like literally never completed anything. I've never completed a book. And I would like to complete a book. So like that's my goal. Of course the goal is to like be published and to like get it into the querying process and all that stuff. But I think I just need to like make the goal to complete this book. And even if I'm the only one that can read it or like if I give it to my mother to read it, like even if that's those do like even if nobody reads this, as long as like I got to the point and it's like the end. Like that's it because I've never gotten to that point. And it's like I think to be an author you need to finish a book babes I think you need to finish a book it's just a bit of a struggle I like I still am in the development process I've been in the development process for months now because the last time I talked about this I was still in the development process and for some reason I've gone a full 360 and I've ended back up on the plot that I was like I don't want to do this months ago okay but that's why I'm like I feel like it's really important to like keep all your ideas like every time I get a new idea I put it in my notes app I have a notion like full of just like random ideas even if they sound so stupid and even if they don't make sense or even if it's like the smallest thing like it could be an idea like the sun turns purple you know like something so stupid that you think is dumb but then like I, I would suggest still writing it down because you don't know how you can like work that into something else. I had this idea months and months ago of like this like dystopian kind of with elements of fantasy but it was definitely more heavily focused on the dystopian aspect like whole worlds like post-apocalyptic post world and that was kind of like where I started this story from and then I scrapped that idea because I felt like it was like falling flat like it wasn't working and then over this past month slash no really the past two weeks I've had like this idea in my head that's gone more fantasy and also aliens and I just don't know where that came from I don't know where the aliens came from like that's literally never even been in my head but for some reason I was thinking about aliens the whole time and I was like literally fleshing the whole thing out and then I was like no this is not the vibe but then while I was sleeping because I also I get the best ideas when I'm like laying on my bed not sleeping like that moment before you sleep before you end up falling asleep I get the best ideas then and I was like wait combine them okay see what's shaking there combine them and that's where I'm at now I'm feeling good about it but at the same time I was feeling good about those other two ideas so I don't know my main issue is that like the most important thing to a story is your characters right because your characters drive your plot that's what every everybody will tell you characters drive the plot the plot does not drive the characters you need to know what your characters want what they need what they're afraid of their flaws and then their truth to in order to create a story because it's supposed to work from there like if if Jenny lives in a world where she really loves her cat and then her cat is taken, Jenny is going to want to get her cat back. There is the story, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's all based on the character's motives and their goals, which is like, I understand that. And I think I'm good at that. Like I could get that down because I, I know my characters a little too well. I know them a little too well because I just trauma dump onto them and they they're definitely like they're very like my characters have a lot of depth to them already so like I've had that point where like I know their motives I know their fears I know all of that but then the struggle is not knowing a world that I want to put them in because I although I know their semi kind of goals right if I don't know the environment they're in I don't know the specifics of that goal like if if one of my characters goals is like freedom like I still gotta know what they want to be free from do you know what I'm saying like I think like people are a product of their environment right so it's like I could only know so much about the plot of this story if I don't know my character's environment fully and what's made them become the way that they are so then that's my struggle my struggle is like the world building aspect I think that's really what it is my struggle is the world building aspect and building a world to like drop my character in that way I could be like oh okay B 
because you grew up in this because you experienced this now it's like i've known what motive i wanted you to have based on your personality and based on the trajectory that in the character arc that i want you to go on but now i know the logistics of that like now i know if you want to save your cat but you live in space you need to get a spaceship you see what i'm saying like now we're you know what i'm saying like oh but like what if there's a world with no spaceships anymore and now you're you see so like that's kind of the part that i'm like at right now where like it's just i just i'm just trying to world build <laughs> and it's hurting my head i plan on working on that today i was doing a little bit of like i went back to the drawing board back to the notepad um because sometimes writing ideas down like typing them on my computer sometimes i like think too much and i don't just like write versus like writing with pen on paper i tend to just like let it flow as the as the ideas are coming to me so hopefully you guys don't get bored of writing maya but honestly i don't feel like doing anything else so this is what we're doing today this is what we're doing today silhouette of top anymore like I don't know if it's entirely flattering to like like I always just feel like a bodybuilder and I have no muscles so it's like why do I feel like a bodybuilder but I think it's just like I have an insecurity about the way that my shoulders are I don't know I don't know what it is but I'm always just like iffy when I wear like tops like this but at the same time I don't want to wear a full like short sleeve top because it's hot i decided that i'm gonna go to a cafe i'm running behind schedule because when am i not <laughs> when am i not it's 12 38 i don't even know if i'm gonna get a seat let's knock on wood hopefully i do and this summer has literally flown by y'all august 1st was what it was yesterday that means my birthday is in like a few weeks and I go back to school in a few weeks and I'm not prepared. I'm not like this summer was so short. It felt so short. Like what did I do? Realistically, what did I do? 
I moved into my apartment. That was it. That was literally it. I mean, part of me is looking forward to going back to school just because, so now where I'm at in my schedule, all of my classes are film classes. Some of the film classes I'm a little bit like, mm, cause I have to do like history of film again. And that was like, ah. And I have to do film production, which a lot of people that I spoke to in my screenwriting class were like, film production was the death of me. And I'm like, oh, bro, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Cause I think I'm gonna have to be like actually producing films, which is like scary. I don't, <laughs> that's scary. What do you mean? What do you mean? And this next semester, I unfortunately am not going to have a writing class just because of the way, like because of my gap semester, I'm technically behind on all of on my prerequisites. So I'm like a semester behind. So I had to take production before I could take screenwriting, the second screenwriting class. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. It's really, it's hard for me to focus on like writing my personal stuff when I'm writing for school because in my screenwriting class like you have to like think of a new idea think of a new script every week you know like you're writing a new like five page script or like a ten page script it's like basically every week and like it's hard to be trying to like develop and like think out and go in depth with like my own personal work when I'm like trying to create new stories every week to get my grade. I'm not too upset that I don't have a writing class this semester because also semesters are short. Like I'll have, I'll have a writing class in the spring and that will be that and it'll be fine. I think I want to do makeup. Maybe that'll make me feel better about this top, but I really don't think I want to wear this top. It's not Joe vibing. Yeah, no. No, it looks so stupid. Much better. I literally wear this shirt like every week, but this is the chosen fit. I'm probably gonna tuck the shirt, but probably that's more, I don't know. I don't know, but this is just more my vibe. So the two things were wildly expensive. So I spent way too much money for a random day. But I also, I went to Target and I got deodorant because I'm out. And then I got Aquaphor because I think I can take off my bandage tomorrow because it said three to four days. So I'm just going to do the fullest 
I'm gonna do the four days and then once I take it off, I'm probably gonna have to put Aquaphor on it. Stopped into Urban as you guys saw and picked out a ton of things. But honestly guys, these two things, even though they were wildly, wildly, wildly expensive, they're gonna get so much wear. <laughs> I'm gonna wear them all the time. I just can't wait for it to get a little bit chilly so that I can wear them. Cause you're gonna look at me right now and you're gonna be like, girl, did you really just buy sweaters in the summer? Yes, I did. But it's gonna get cold. It's gonna get cold. And this is my vibe. I love stuff like this. I love a little varsity polo-esque, schoolgirl-esque, you know, type vibe. And it's like so cute and oversized, so comfy cozy. Like I'm gonna be wanting to wear this every day to class. So I got it in the blue. And then I got it in the like cream and gray. And it's just, I don't even feel bad about it because I'm gonna wear it all the freaking time. Yeah, now I feel so tired and parched. Let me, actually I think I have some LaCroix. That really does the trick. Damn. I feel like I was just slapped in the face and now I'm woken up. It's like about to be eight o'clock. I think I wanna eat dinner early. Last night I made like pasta and shrimp and Brussels sprouts for dinner. So I have those leftovers, which is immaculate. But I ate super late last night and then I ended up going to bed late. So I wanna try to eat early. That way, you know, I could start winding down early. Maybe I could do that. The Walking Dead was so good last night. I feel like I have to limit myself to like one episode a night because they're so long. But I didn't realize how much I forgot. I guess it's been a while. I think, I don't remember when I had started watching it. It might have been either early high school or maybe even middle school. No, because middle school, I feel like my dad was watching it. I know there was like a time when it was like coming out and my dad, was it my dad and my brother? I think it was just my dad that was like always on the P's and Q's. Like, Walking Dead's coming on. It's time to watch Walking Dead. And I was never into it then. So I feel like that was middle school. So I feel like probably early in high school, I started getting into it. Watched then and then I had stopped. I think I had stopped right before Negan's season. I think that's what occurred. Not too sure though. But I don't remember anything else that really happens. All I remember is kind of the vibe of the pilot. Like I remember Rick wakes up from a coma and he is looking for his wife and child. That's about it. Like I was watching the second episode and I was like, Glenn? Little baby Glenn? I didn't know you popped up in the second episode. And it's like all these characters that are like coming back that I'm like, I kind of remember like Merle and Andrea and Carol like they're all just kind of like popping back up in my head so it's like feeling very nostalgic but also the fact that I don't remember everything is still making it very entertaining like I actually don't know what's gonna happen next like vaguely I know like vague things but like like I know everybody that dies but I don't know like the little details so yeah I've been enjoying that correct me if I'm wrong but were the walkers not 10 times different in this first season than they are in the other seasons? I'm not like a Walking Dead comic book galley. I don't know much about the Walking Dead. But I, I like vaguely remember the fact that the walkers could not climb and they could not hold things. But all of a sudden in season one, they're like smashing in windows and climbing walls. And like running low key and i'm like wait wait i'm confused but it's whatever but now anytime i watch a zombie movie i just like i have so many comparisons to the last of us <sighs> that's really just top tier that's really top tier the last of us oh gosh i mean everything going on with the strike right now is like crazy i have no clue when this strike is gonna end it I, it's been going on for like a lot longer than i expected it to go on for and like so much stuff is getting pushed back and i'm like these studios i i like i don't do y'all have like a mountain like do y'all need like i know y'all are 
astronomically rich where you don't need to make money but hasn't it come to a point where you could just give the people what they deserve like they literally said it's not even going to be like one percent out of the ceo's paycheck to pay the writers the actors the directors everybody what they actually deserve so i'm just like well, I don't understand the studio's mindset. Like if I was a head of a studio, if I was a head of Netflix or a streaming company, I would just pay my people what they deserve and then get back to business, get back to doing what everybody loves. So I'm just confused. But of course, everything is getting pushed back, which is like, it's not like a complaint. Like, yeah, people are on strike pay the people like i feel like the strike is the strike is definitely probably gonna affect the emmys what are the emmys supposed to be one second one second okay well they've already they've postponed it the emmys were supposed to be september 18th but they postponed it to like an unspecified date because of the strikes and everything which i figured was gonna happen i didn't know how close it was but i figured it was gonna happen but I was like, I'm really excited for this Emmys and I hope it still happens. Like I hope the strike and everybody gets what they deserve so the strike can end so this Emmys can happen because all of my baddies from The Last of Us, like all, every single one of them got a nomination and I was so ready to sit down and just watch the cast of The Last of Us sweep the floor at the Emmys. Like Pedro was gonna get an award. Bella was gonna get an award. The people that played the two characters, all these people, they even had the little boy that played, um, shoot, what was that? I need to know their names. <laughs> I forget names. Like literally everybody was nominated. Like you cannot say it was not the best show of 2023 when your entire cast, your entire cast, your entire cast was nominated. Entire cast. I think that I think that's grounds. Oh, Stormy. Storm Reed got a nomination. Sam and Henry. So the little boy. The the how old was he? I don't know. I know he's young. I don't know his age. They don't have it on his Google, his age. But the little boy that plays Sam was nominated. And I was like, I was gonna root for him regardless. It's like, go ahead, little brother. So hopefully everything gets resolved and everything works out for the actors and the writers so that my people from The Last of Us can cook up and get what they deserve, the, the recognition that they deserve because best show of all time. Anyways. Oh, I didn't even tell you about my writing time, but I felt very productive so productive that i feel like i want to go back like tomorrow but at the same time like traveling into the, like going there and then having to pay six dollars for an iced chai latte to sit down in a cafe is it's a lot it's a lot it's very overwhelming sometimes but i love that cafe it's my favorite it's so cute their outdoor section is so cute but i just popped on my headphones and i was just zoom zoom zooming and i had watched a brandon sanderson video before I left the house. If you don't know Brandon Sanderson, he's one of the most successful fantasy writers currently, you know. And I I watched, he has a YouTube channel. If you're interested in writing fantasy or just writing in general, Brandon Sanderson has a YouTube channel where he like spills all of his tea. It's great. I, I It's great. So I watched one of his videos this morning on kind of how to get started with writing something when like you have an idea. And he was basically like, you know, take one of your characters or take your main character and write a monologue for them. Like just do it from their perspective or maybe third person perspective, but just write a monologue of like them speaking their mind and speaking whatever they want to speak. And you'll find that like things develop from there. So I was like, okay, let me try this out. And I picked one of my, like the main main character to write my monologue for and at first it was like a little tough i was like oh like where do i go from here like how do i start this but once i got in the flow i was like it was really helpful it was really helpful i have like now three i have three pages worth of like a monologue for my main character of her just kind of kind of explaining her own backstory which is like backstories are really important especially like finding out like why your character 
believes the things that they believe and why they need to change like it all develops from their backstory from their childhood trauma you know what i'm saying writing is a lot about psychology which i feel like a lot of people don't realize but part of me also wants to like take some psychology classes because i feel like that would make my writing a lot better so i wrote her monologue it was like three pages and i found out new things about her that i didn't even know i found out new things about the world like the world finally was starting to like come to life in my head like i could see it my problem before was that i could not visualize the world like i was literally like scamming scamming through pinterest trying to look at pictures to kind of like trying to fit what this world looks like in my head because it's kind of hard to imagine scenes or to imagine pivotal moments when you don't know what the surroundings look like what they feel like and all that stuff so just writing the monologue and like letting the character like flow and dump so helpful i need to do that for two more characters because technically there's three main characters but i don't know if there's three main characters because it's like kind of like two i don't i don't know i don't know every second every minute man i swear that she can get it say if you a bad bitch put your hands up high hands up high hands up high tell them turn the lights down right now put me in the mood i'm talking about dark moon perfume go go I recognize your fragrance, hold up, you ain't never gotta say shit, mm. And I know your taste is a little bit, mm, high maintenance, mm. Everybody else basic, you live life on an everyday basis With poetic justice, poetic justice If I told you that a flower bloomed in a dark room, would you trust it? I mean, I write poems in these songs, dedicated to you when You're in the mood for empathy, blood in my pen Better yet, with your friends and them I really wanna know you all. I really wanna show you off. Fuck God, pour up plenty of champagne. Cold nights when you curse this name. You called up your girlfriends and y'all curled in that little bitty range. I heard that she wanna go and party. She wanna go and party. Nigga, don't approach her with that Atari. Nigga, that ain't good game, homie. Sorry. They say conversation. Rule a nation. I can tell, but I could never write my wrongs unless I write it down for real. P.S. You can get it, you can get it, you can get it, you can get it. And I know just know just know just know just know just what you want. Oh, where the justice put it in the song, alright. You can get it, you can get it, you can get it, you can get it. And I know just know just know just know just know just what you want. Oh, where the justice put it in the song, alright. I really hope you play this, cause oh girl you test my patience With all these seductive photographs and all these one-off vacations you've been taking Clearly a lot for me to take in, it don't make sense Young East African girl, you too busy fucking with your other man I was trying to put you on game, put you on a plane, take you and your mama to the motherland I could do it Maybe one day, when you figure out you're gonna need someone When you figure out it's all right here in the city And you don't run from where we come from That sound like poetic justice Poetic justice You were so new to this life But goddamn, you got adjusted I mean, I really want to do something Dedicated to the fun sex Yo, put your head, yo, soft skin And yo, big ass, and that's how you dress Um, happy Saturday I'm currently Ooh, 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 I just accidentally scratched my tattoo not supposed to do that i have to put some more aquaphor on it but she's looking cool hey <laughs> i just feel so cool with my little tattoo anyways um today's saturday and i really have nothing major for today except for the fact that i'm going to a y2k themed birthday party and that's like the only thing that i'm doing today so i have to like get ready for that at some point pick an outfit for that it's i for some reason the outfit is stressing me out like you know how gen zers we already dress in like early 2000s like we wear the low-rise jeans the baggy jeans the small top the the tube tops the off the shoulders like everything we wear is already early 2000s so i'm like what do i wear that looks like an early 2000s like outfit outfit but it doesn't look like something that i literally wear every single day like something that i wore two days ago 
so yeah struggling a bit with the outfit but i'm going to put some nails on because i haven't had nails on for a little while i'm like going back and forth between these two i really like these I said the last time I did my pink nails that I was supposed to do these next. These are from Urban Outfitters, but the brand is called Shrine. And I was supposed to do these because they're like super cool, funky. But I feel like this is giving more Y2K. Like it looks like the silver glitter. I don't know. Something about it just feels Y2K. And also I think it's like the square shape because these are square nails. And I feel like almond slash oval slash curved i feel like that's a very 2023 thing you know but i feel like a square nail gives a very early 2000s but they're just very long like they're they're very long for like me for like what i'm used to but you know i don't have to keep them on for very long they're very cute like i love the pattern and design on them i love the black so yeah i'm just not gonna be able to do function for a little while so maybe i put them on pop them off like at the end of the week um oh and i have to figure out what i'm gonna do with my hair oh my goodness i'll probably watch some jujitsu kaizen while i'm doing this because i stayed up till like 12 last night and i'm almost made it through season one of jujitsu kaizen and now i'm like i'm on grind mode because at first i was like pretty slow i mean i really like the anime like i, I think it's really it's really good. I love the characters. I love the animation. It's really confusing. Like, it, I'm just a little bit stupid, but I do think that anime always makes me feel stupid because the, the, like, everything is just so complex. Like, the magic systems, like, the whole, like, curses, but then, like, cursed energy, and then, I'm a little bit confused, okay? But, like, I still understand the basic premise of the plot. Like, I can understand the major things. But sometimes they sit, they 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 talk a lot of stuff, and I'm just like I'm a little bit lost. But I'm just gonna nod my head and smile and keep watching, cause like. But I wanted to like grind out season one because I really want to get to season two, because I've been the reason I started Jujutsu Kaisen was because I saw TikToks of it and like I saw TikTok edits, and that's the only way that I pick my anime. Like I if I see a TikTok edit, and it convinces me, then I'm watching the anime. I'm watching it, so. I had seen TikTok edits of it and I was like, oh, okay, this looks cool, fun, and fresh. Like, the, the fighting looks cool, looks like bleach type vibes. I like it. And then I saw TikToks for like season two. And I love, one thing I love is like a villain origin story. Mm. One thing I love is like a morally gray villain origin story. And I think that's what season two is supposed to be. I keep seeing clips of that. So, like, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating that, so I just need to get through season one. But I have, like, five episodes left, and they're only, like, 20 minutes each. So, I'll do some of that. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. completed the nails let me show you here they are like this they're very cute very very cute i love the like black tips like i love this design this is genuinely something like i would have gone to a salon for um they're just very long like they're very long to what i'm used to so i don't know we'll see i might have to pop these off earlier than like the full length of them because normally my nails last like two to three weeks but i don't know if i can like 
handle these for two to three weeks. So I'm already like, what do I do with myself? But maybe I could like cut them down after today. Like I could cut them to be like short squares. I always try to like figure out how to link the nails for you guys. But honestly, like I think they would be on Amazon, but when I go to Amazon, I can't find them. So I would say check all your local beauty supply stores. They normally be having the best nails and it's just like i feel like people don't know to go to the to shack but yeah i'm doing my makeup hopefully i can do it fast because like i'm not in a rush but like i don't want to like dilly dally and then i'm late so yeah we're gonna do some music though we're gonna do some icy spicy okay i spy with my little eye a little icy spicy <laughs> I'm my my Finished makeup, hair, the whole nine yards. This is the makeup. I tried to do like extra liner to give that like early 2000s liner look. I don't know. It's really the same vibe, but I tried to do something different with my hair because you guys know I never do really anything different with my hair. So, oh, I'm turning around. Yeah, I kind of did like this. I don't know. I don't know if they would do this, but it's something different. So hopefully that counts for something. And then I have to show you the fit. Okay. And then, oh, there's a hole in the way, but this is the fit. This is what I chose. It's so basic, but like, it's the only thing I could think of. Like, you know, low rise camo pants, very Y2K-esque. And then I have this top because I don't really have a top that's like would be Y2K, but not too casual. And then this is the one, this is the top from my outfit online that has like the open back like that. And then my jewelry, this is from En Route Jewelry, my nameplate. I have no clue where these earrings are, but probably either like Urban Outfitters. And then, yeah. So, and then of course I did G Fezos because you can't get more early 2000s than a pair of white Air Forces. I think we did well. I charged my digital camera. So I think I'll bring that along with me just, oh. I think I'll bring that along with me just in case, you know, I can take some pictures of people. I don't know, I love taking pictures of people. So yeah, I should head out. I'll talk to you guys later. These nails do look really cool, but I just, it's so long, but yeah. Final look, I rock with it. Lean with it, rock with it. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> We're done with our outing. It's now, oh my God, this top. This I've been like clutching this top this whole day being like, is the stuff that isn't there gonna fall out? Because what is there to fall out? But the little bit that is, is there might. I mean, I'm just always worried. <sighs> I'm so tired. It's the Trader Joe's of it all. The Trader Joe's takes all of the, all of the life force from me. <laughs> we did, oh, oh, your book is back there. Mom got one book. What did you get? I don't remember. <laughs> she got, she got a Taylor Jenkins Reid book because I know all the girlies love Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I like showed her one and then you ended up liking a different yeah. one or the same, I don't know. Yeah, the same one, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh. So I don't know which one it is, but yeah, she got a Taylor Jenkins Reid book. And then I got four books because because I did and I just wanted to show you guys real quick before we head home um I got Skyward by Brandon Sanderson because I've never read a Brandon Sanderson book but I always watch Brandon Sanderson for like writing advice and like I literally this is the guy the the like white guy that like last was it winter that I would watch his lecture yeah 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 so this is him Brandon okay. Sanderson so I've never read one of his books and I'm like, well, if I take his advice on like writing and I like get taught from him, then I might as well try one of his books, see what it's about. And then I got this one, which I was going in there really only looking to do like dystopian or fantasy. But then this one just really caught my attention. It's More Than Happy by Adam Silvera. And I've never more heard- More than not. More. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> I'm so tired. More happy than not by Adam Silvera. And I've never heard of this author. And um, I think this is his debut novel. But it sounds like a really depressing story. And I like a good depression. I like I like a good heartbreaking, heart wrenching. I think this is also like a queer love story. And I've been I wanted to read a nice queer love story and yeah and i read like literally when i pick up a book in barnes and nobles i have to immediately go on goodreads and look at the ratings in order to like go forward with it and the first rating that somebody gave was like this book broke their heart but in all the best ways possible and i love a good heartbreak in all the best ways possible so this wasn't on the agenda but i'm like why not why not right <laughs> that's just my that's my saying of every of everything and then there's this book, which I'm actually really excited for this one. This one's called Incendiary, Ignite the Revol- No, it's just called Incendiary. But it's by Zoraida Cordova, which again, never heard of this author, but the blurb of this sounded great and it also sounded up my alley. Like I'm trying to read, I was looking for stuff that's very like revolution, rebellion, apocalypse, dystopian related. And I don't think this is dystopian, but it is about like revolutions and stuff like that and it has like some magic systems stuff it just sounded it sounded right up my alley like right up in the mood that i'm in like dark twisted that vibe <laughs> and i'm like i was in that little i was in the romance section for a few moments and i was like i'm not into anything light and fluffy right now it, and it's and it's interesting because normally those are books you read during the summer like yeah. you read the light and fluffy during the summer but i think light and fluffy for me needs to come during like christmas that's when i'm in my light and fluffy <laughs> mood but the summer for some reason i'm ready to be traumatized and then i got scythe because this is another kind of it's not dystopian but it's another one where it's like about humanity and like different structures of humanity but it also has a little bit of like sci-fi because they're like kind of assassins lots of death lots of death and trauma and i thought that that was good and also somebody recommended me this book like a long time ago so i was like why not finally read it and this is by neil shusterman so yeah those are my four books that i got i spent 53 dollars at barnes and nobles today but I think I'm, I'm really excited for everything that I got. The, my only issue is I don't know what I'm going to start with, but I'm really excited for all of these reads. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited too. <laughs> excited? She's excited to see if I even do read it. 
but I really am. I don't know what I'm gonna start with though. Well, oh, so I, I, I came to her and I had five books in my hand, right? Because I also had the Maze Runner in my hand. Because I don't know if I told you guys or not, but I, I started reading the Maze Runner on my Kindle. I bought it on my Kindle and started reading it. And I had wanted a physical copy as well. But I was like, okay, that can wait. Like, that can wait because that's just like a frivolous, like, I'm already, I already bought the book. I already bought the book and I have it on my Kindle, so I don't need to buy it right now. So I put that one, I put that one back. And then we ended up on the four that we did. So that's my Barnes haul. <laughs> Thanks for watching my Barnes haul. And now we'll go home. Oh, and tell, it's a new Barnes. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> She's really adamant on the fact that the Barnes wasn't there because I was telling her that the Barnes was there for a while and she wow. found out that the Barnes wasn't there for a while. For anyone who knows Brooklyn, okay. it's where Barney's used to be. Okay. Is now the new Barnes and Nobles, which is pretty cool. Right. So cool. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> All right. Well, now we'll go home. It was a good outing. Just be my lover, boy you lead me to paradise